Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, jungle photography, and what you should bring when you go into the jungle. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to be talking about is clothes. Uh, as you can see, I'm not currently in the jungle, but I did recently go on a five-day trek through the Sumatran jungle near Bukit Lawang, and it was completely amazing. It was the longest I've ever spent just completely in the jungle, no other people, uh, just me, my brother, and our guides, and we had a great time. We only got one good photo, but it was a great experience, and the photos didn't really matter at the end of it. Since it was our first long trip into there, we learned a lot about what we should take, what we shouldn't take, and a lot about surviving in the jungle. So I'm gonna teach you some of that today. <clears throat> the first thing, like I said, is clothes. Uh, I would really only bring two shorts and two shirts. So I just had one pair of shorts and a shirt, and I wore that every day for the five days of hiking. Uh, it was basically just so disgusting, no matter what we did, that it wasn't worth changing and getting another pair disgusting. So our clothes never dried the entire time. No matter what you did, you could hang it by the fire, you could hang it wherever you wanted, even if it didn't rain. It was always wetter in the morning when we put it on than it was the night before when we put it out to dry. So I'm not really sure how that happens, but it does happen. So just expect that. That's why I would also have another pair of shorts and shirt, just so that when you're at camp, you can have something dry to lounge in. And then just keep that in a wet bag, keep it by the fire, make sure that's always dry, and then you won't be so miserable when you get back to camp from a really long hike. Um, one of the things that I did wear was these Vibrams. So these Vibrams are amazing. They're Vibram five fingers. They got the little toes. They're not the most stylish shoes, but nobody in the jungle is gonna care. Um, I'll link these below so you can check them out, but for what walking in water and mud and anything, and then just being able to dip your feet in the water and scrub them and wash them out, these are the best things that I've found. We walked for four or five hours a day sometimes just up and down the river, like literally walking inside of the river, and these were invaluable. So definitely recommend those. And then for camp, you're not gonna wanna have these wet toe shoes on all the time. So I also just brought a pair of flip-flops. So these flip-flops were great to have just to slip on and off of camp so you didn't get your feet dirty. Uh, you could just put them by your tent or whatever and just have them nearby. So I definitely recommend bringing both of those. As you can see, both of these can actually fit right here in this pocket of my bag. So they take up so little space. Another thing I like about both of those. Uh, something else that's invaluable in the jungle, toilet paper. You're gonna be digging holes to poop in every day, so you're gonna want some toilet paper. Probably don't need this much, but <clears throat> however much you need. I don't know what kind of pooper you are. <clears throat> this here is a Black Rapid strap. So I made a video about this before, this Black Rapid uh, Breathe Sport strap. And basically it's just a sling strap that goes over your shoulder and allows you to carry a really heavy lens for a long time in the jungle. And I wore this all day, every day. Sometimes I would put my uh, lens in my bag because it's just a burden and it's bouncing around and bumping on stuff. The jungle is so, you're getting tangled up all the time. So I would put it in my bag, but when I had it with me, it was always on this thing. I always had this at my side, so if I needed to whip out my camera real fast, I'd just put it right on here. And even on long hikes, up and down hills, climbing through vines and stuff, it always kept my camera safe. So definitely recommend one of these. Um, again, all this stuff is linked below so you don't have to remember everything or write it down. This here is a headlamp. Again, something you have to have. When you're gonna be going to the bathroom at night or uh, just going out to clean your dishes after you eat or whatever. Definitely gonna want a headlamp. Also, we got a little scare with a tiger. I'll make another video about that whole story another time, but one thing that we kept beside us while we slept, even though it probably would have done nothing, is these flashlights to hopefully scare away a ferocious tiger. Again, I don't think that would do anything, but it made us feel better. Um, 
I also keep this dry bag. So I've got this North Face dry sack that packs down really small. And I don't actually use this as a backpack when I'm walking around. I just have it to keep all my wet clothes in so that I can put them in my bag and not get everything else wet. Um, probably not necessary. You could also just carry a plastic bag or whatever if you don't want to spend 50 bucks on this. But I had this anyway, so this is what I use. Talk about the backpack real quick since we're on the subject. This is a Peak Design 30 liter, I don't know what they call it, Peak Design Everyday Pack or something like that. Uh, this is waterproof on the outside, except uh, it's water resistant. It does have entrances where water can get in, so you can't put it underwater, but if it rains or something, it's no problem. So I thought this would be great in the jungle. It turns out that in the jungle, it's so humid, it doesn't matter that the outside is waterproof. The inside just completely soaked through by the end. Uh, it was really bad. All my lenses were fogging up and the whole inside was just disgusting. Anything I put in there would get immediately soaking wet. So I actually would recommend a North Face waterproof bag and then put some silica gel packets in the bottom of it and silica gel packets that you could potentially dry out by the fire because you'll probably need to dry them out once a day or once every two days, I imagine. So I would go with that option next time. That'll be my next backpack. But for now, this is what I have. Um, I also keep this little three-legged thing, multi-tool in here all the time. So I just want to have that nearby. So that's good for taking off L brackets or whatever you might need to do. This here is my Sarui or Siri, I've heard it called. I don't know how we call it. How the heck do you pronounce this name? It is Sure. It's a little monopod. It compacts down to almost nothing. It's carbon fiber, so it's light. And then this here on top is the Really Right Stuff MHO1 tilt head. This head is amazing. It's expensive as well, but I think it's worth every penny. It's like 280 bucks. Uh, but this was my main setup. I didn't bring a tripod or anything. I just wanted to be lightweight being able to walk through the jungle. And so this is what I had on me at all times. Uh, I rarely used it. Honestly, we didn't get enough photo opportunities. It's not like we got to stop for 20 minutes next to elephants. It was basically just deer run in front of us. Shoot as fast as you can, deer is gone. So there wasn't a whole lot of time to pull this thing out, but I also use it as a walking stick while I go down these treacherous, slippery, steep hills of the jungle. And for that, it's also awesome. You can just put out the spike at the bottom and use it as a walking pole. It's perfect. Uh, what else? Water. Of course you need water. I recommend bringing out a bottle or two just so you can keep filling it up with boiled water and always have clean drinking water. It's super important to stay hydrated when it's so hot all the time. Now the fun stuff, this is my Canon 6D Mark II, it's in a lens coat case, so it protects the camera a bit, and then I keep the battery grip on it all the time, I like to have the battery grip for the extended battery life, and just to make sure I'm not going to run out of battery as I'm shooting. And I also like the vertical trigger feature. That's one of the main reasons I keep it on, honestly. It's not that hard to switch the batteries, but I really like having this trigger when I have the big lens on. It just makes it a lot easier to have my hand over here. Uh, for the camera, I would also recommend a camera that has good ISO performance. Uh, in the jungle, it's super dark, even though it might be a bright sunny day outside. It's super dark under that dense jungle canopy. So you're definitely gonna want a camera with good ISO performance. Uh, Another thing I have here is the Sigma f2.8, 120-300 millimeter. Uh, same on good ISO performance. This thing will shoot really good pictures at low in low light with the f2.8 aperture. So it'll let you get low ISO with a high shutter speed, which is exactly what you want as a wildlife photographer. And you'll be able to get that even if the jungle is really dark that day. So. Definitely recommend a low aperture lens. It doesn't have to be something exactly like this, but even a 300 f4 or something is going to be better than, say, a 70 to 300 f4 to 5.6. Uh, 
Attached to that, I often keep my, or I take my Sigma two times converter, and when I don't need the low light performance, then sometimes I'll attach this to get some things like macro photography, or if my subject's just too far away. Um, again, with the f5.6, I try not to put this on too often. Also, it degrades image quality just a tad. But if I'm taking pictures of damselflies or something like that, then I might put my lens down on a tree trunk to stabilize it and take a bit of a long exposure. And then this is no problem at all. So I do carry that. It also takes up so little space that there's no reason not to carry it. Um, on to little side things. In my side pouch here, I keep a spare set of batteries. So I always have my batteries numbered. I took four batteries into the jungle when I went for five days. Um, I think that was plenty. My camera lasts quite long on a battery. I can go all day shooting. I can shoot four or five, six thousand photos on one battery. So four batteries was good for me. You might need more if you're taking video or if your camera eats batteries faster. Just depends. Uh, you might also want to consider a solar charger or something like that, but that's bringing a whole nother level into it and a lot more gear. Another little thing I take is my Pelican case for SD cards. So this is a waterproof, cut, crush-proof case. And so it's perfect for the jungle. If you drop it, it's no problem. If you drop it in water, it's no problem. You got all your SD cards in here, padded and everything. You're not going to have to worry about them falling out and going anywhere. Uh, and you definitely want extra space while you're working. I mean, you know how fast you can fill up an SD card. I usually shoot on 64 gigabyte SD cards so that I don't take too many pictures on one and then it fails and I'm completely screwed. I like to have a bunch of different backups. So I keep about four of those. And then I just got some little things here in the top of my bag. Microfiber cloth, every photographer should have that. Lens wipes, these alcohol swabs, really good for getting those drops of dew that have dried up off the lens. I always carry a bunch of these in my bag. Blower, same thing, little rocket blower, great for getting dust off without touching your lens and getting grease on it. And this here is a little mini uh, clothesline. So I can actually just take this and extend it about 10 feet and just hang up all my dry or all my wet clothes while I go hiking for the day. I'll just hang this by the fire. That way when I get back, hopefully those clothes are nice and dry. I can lounge in peace and I don't have to worry about having wet clothes on at night. So I definitely, it takes up no space, I keep that. And last but not least is this little bit of uh, gaffer's tape around the pen, right? If you need a pen, you got it. And if you need some tape, tape back, back, tape back a little branch. If you're shooting through some brush or tape up your shoes, who knows what might happen, always have a little bit of tape on me. And also this can act as like a neon thing. If you're doing something, you need people to be able to see you. And the last thing I would say is a guide. Definitely don't skip on the guide. Uh, we had an amazing guide when we were in Sumatra. We knew a hotel owner there, and he told us about his brother-in-law, who was just this incredible guy, knew all these scientific names of plants and animals. He had been working with orangutan uh, conservancy groups, conservation groups, for 30 years or something like that. He had been in the jungle for basically his whole life. He knew the jungle like it was his backyard. He knew everything there was to know. And I tell you, that made all the difference in our hike. Even if we didn't bring our cameras, I would have had an amazing time just learning all about the jungle. I mean, he was chopping down banana trees so we could eat the inside of the banana tree. And they were collecting fresh food every night. They got clams and fish and all kinds of stuff to eat every day. After the first two days, I don't know if we ate anything but maybe rice that was from back in the village. Everything we were eating was just stuff they found in the jungle. It was crazy. Uh, so definitely don't think, oh, I'm so good at this. I can just go into the jungle on my own. We ran into a tiger. You don't want to run into a tiger without a guide. So get a guide.
And that's about all I would say. If you're thinking about going on a jungle trip, think about taking basically this exact pack right here. Super lightweight and convenient. It's got everything you need and you're gonna have an amazing time on your jungle trip. And hopefully you'll come back with way more pictures than I did. So thanks for watching guys. And until the next video, peace. I had one pair of short shirts, one pair, one shirt and one pair of pants that I was, oh, God damn it. So I just had one pair of shirts. <laughs>